Well, um, I expect everybody's got a few daffodils in their garden. Um, daffodils are the herald of spring. They come out from um, as early as sort of January, February time, all the way through till kind of April time, you know, Easter time. Um, but the ones you're probably most familiar with are actually the cultivated daffodils, the ones in uh, gardens and that kind of thing. They're lovely, they're absolutely lovely. I do love cultivated daffodils, but they are actually bred from the original wild daffodils. And wild daffodils used to carpet the hills of England and Wales, and uh, that's where you get the host of golden daffodils. That's what World Wordsworth was looking at. He was looking at literally just millions, hundreds of thousands of daffodils just carpeting the, 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 the slopes. These days, they're not quite so common. Um, you don't very often see that kind of population of wild daffodil, um, but it is lovely when you do come across them. They're just gorgeous. Um, go up to Cumbria, have a look and see if you can find uh, a few colonies still there. Um, the way that you can tell a wild daffodil as opposed to a cultivated one is um, wild daffodils are actually very usefully uh, smaller than a cultivated one, like the, the big ones that you pick. Um, but bigger than the dwarf narcissi that you might sometimes find in gardens as well. So they tend to be around 30 to 35 centimetres tall. Um, they've also got these lovely dainty flowers. Um, they tend to move a lot more than garden daffodils. So they have like little kind of dancey petals that tend to just kind of move around in any little breeze. Um, they also provide a really good pollen source for um, all sorts of different insects, particularly those which are out kind of in early spring. So you're talking about bumblebees and that kind of thing. They need as many spring bulbs and that kind of thing as they can get at that time of year. So uh, it's a, again, it's a really lovely thing to have. Um, and in terms of um, the ecological biodiversity, then daffodils really, they're just part of our native flora and um, to be encouraged in that way too. Okay, well, um, it was actually the Victorians William Wordsworth himself being a Victorian, um, was the, the Victorians who started the uh, current craze for daffodils and they started the whole breeding process. Um, so all of the uh, varieties that we have now are descendants from those original crosses that they made, the original hybrids that they made. So, poem. Right, I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills when all at once I saw a cloud, a host of golden daffodils, and it was Narcissus, pseudo-Narcissus, that he was looking at when he wrote those words. Oh, it's just lovely, isn't it? You know, you can see what he would have seen, I think. He just conjures up that scene, and it's a lost scene to us, to an extent, because there are so few of these colonies left. Um, and I think that it's, it's lovely to have it in a poem. It would be so much nicer if we could see it in real life, I have to say. Um, but just to finish in Wordsworth's words and then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils <laughs>